There's nothing that is covered that shall not be revealed. Folks, we're going to be going through some interesting stuff in this video. Uh, I just did a video over on my other channel covering this topic. And this is actually an extension, sort of a part two to it. Uh, this is amazing what I found. We're talking about our history here. We're talking about the American Indians and where did they actually originally come from. And this is something you most likely have never heard before because this was something I just heard about today for the first time. I had kind of an idea. Actually, I didn't even have an idea. Um, I just knew a little bit of history that kind of relates to this. Like I remember hearing about the Grand Canyon and there being Egyptian treasure there. Um, other than that, though, I hadn't really heard anything like this. Essentially, what we're talking about here is some of the American Indians are from Egypt, from Assyria. They're from, <laughs> they're from ancient Babylon. They're from also other countries as well. We're talking about Mediterranean. And it's going to be pretty surprising to you what i got to show you, folks, because... Um, I'm guessing a lot of people have not seen this before. Check this out. For example, uh, this is the name for Cherokee. Okay, you're talking about the Cherokee people. This is literally the name of their god. Okay, I'll show you this actually. Here it is. This is actually in Phoenician or Paleo-Hebrew. This is an ancient um, artifact, I guess you would say. And you can, as you can see here, it has the YHVH, and this is literally something you can find in a lot of these ancient uh, stone carvings and things like this. This is actually, I think, from Michigan. Um, if you read the Cherokee, I actually covered this over on my other channel. Creation, you know, story, it literally reads like the first book, folks. In the beginning, Yahweh created the sky world and our mother earth. The waters around the earth were dark and deep, but the spirit of Yahweh moved upon the face of the waters. Does this sound a little familiar? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the Cherokees, okay? And like I said, if you go through this, and here's another example of what I'm talking about, how they actually say the name. Look at this. It's literally pronounced almost the exact same. It's because... And, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. It's because certain tribes, certain American Indian tribes, around 500 BC came over to the Americas to avoid Babylonian captivity. Okay? So we're talking about what we call the mound builders, which almost look kind of like pyramids when you look at them. There's actually three different sort of eras to history for the American Indians. You have the Mound Builders, you have the Hopewell, and Adena. Now, the Mound Builders are actually before 500 BC. And the mounds, of course, I've talked about that on video before. Generally, they're giant, 8 foot, 9 foot, 10 foot, 11 foot tall people. We had a lot of articles written in newspapers, famous new newspapers from today, you know, New York Times, whatever, where Back 100 years ago, or actually more than 100 years ago, usually like 100, 200 years ago, more like 1890, 1880, they'd have these articles talking about, oh, they found all these giant skeletons in Ohio or Indiana or Michigan, and they're on these mounds. And I've, I've done videos talking about this in the past. That happened to be the time frame of like 2000 BC to 500 BC. Those were the mound builders. What we're going to talk about more here is the Hopewell, which are these people that came from ancient Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, uh, Hebrews, all manner of people. And they came over and especially, let me show you this here. I wanted to show you a couple things. I had, I thought I had it written down, but um, these guys came over to escape the Babylonian captivity. Okay. This is what we're talking about. So that was around 500 BC. And they came over to, well, let me show you the areas that they were in. Again, this is the time frame, 500 BC to 400 AD. If we go through this, 
we're talking here hopewell sites are atlantic coast south u.s tennessee and iowa now also there's some rather interesting stuff going on around the great lakes as well as you can see here they, they came in through the great lakes or down below with uh near florida this is those that were trying to get as you would say away from babylonian captivity which is around 580 bc i think it was and this is the type of uh buildings they would have as you can see it kind of looks like a sort of pyramid structure which is rather intriguing um and how they set up their uh this is the Ch chicoa no Ch chihuahua state historical site here and how it looked it looks kind of like a again a pyramid structure this is the north carolina mounds as you can see here of course you've heard of star as you would say forts and everything as well again this is what i was showing you earlier for the name of as you would say god you have in their native american languages yod he va he you see that yod he va yod he wa yahud yawa ya voyaha i don't even know how to say them so i'm just trying to guess here a little bit there <laughs> You can see it's very similar though, right? Now I showed a lot of things in my other video that are pretty surprising. I'll show you a little bit here because it's just amazing. This actually here's a very amazing. This is from various American Indian languages. They have words, how they're spoken, how they're written and compare them to Chaldaic. As you can see here, very similar, okay? Shailu, Chemim, instead of Shemim, Abba, Ish, as you can see here, literally almost the exact same words. Now, these are various American Indian languages. What it was essentially is, again, it's kind of interesting. It reminds me of when we came over here. You know, you had the, you had the um, Spaniards, you had the English, and you had the French come over to this area this country and it was around you know 17 1600s 1400s depending on who you're talking about <laughs> right um now of course the michigan wasn't even established till i think it was 1830 a lot of people think it was just you know 17 you know whatever but it was actually a little bit later on so you have all these people from different areas coming over right the same thing happened back then you had Assyrians, you had Egyptians, you had all these different people from different places coming over at the same time, and that's who make up the American Indians. You have different tribes are actually from different peoples. Like I mentioned about the Grand Canyon, that um, they have, there's a lot of treasure, Egyptian treasure in the Grand Canyon. Of course, for a hundred years, they didn't want people to know about this. There was an employee that worked for, I think it was a Smithsonian, that came out and, and put out an article talking about this, that there was all these, there's this area in the Grand Canyon where there's this huge amount of Egyptian hieroglyphics and, and, and gold and, and just random items, right? Artifacts. And then they said, oh, no, no, this guy doesn't work for us. We don't even know who he is. And they said that for a hundred years. They literally for a hundred years said they didn't know who this guy was. He didn't work for us, you know, He's not part of our, our, our company like that. Then I think it was 2015, somewhere in there. It was recent, not that long ago. They put out a little article on their website. Oh yeah, that guy worked for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, we, we we're just telling the opposite for a hundred years. No big deal. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Yeah. Of course, they also, if you go look at these, um, I've talked about this in the past as well these articles from 100, 200 years ago, talking about these mounds, like we were just looking at there, they had more ancient mounds. Like I mentioned, there was people back in 2000 BC that were here, the mound builders. And, you know, these were everywhere, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, everywhere. Actually, there's a lot of other states too, Tennessee, all of them. They had these mounds and they would have giants' bones. I mean, they'd be like, you know, 10 foot tall. And 
the Smithsonian would come along and take them all. And they'd be gone. That's really nice of them, right? Um, and then, of course, you'd never hear about it again, right? Of course, this completely fits in with evolution, right? So supposedly, you're supposed to be getting taller, not the other way around. And so it doesn't fit the, the what they want you, you know, we're talking what they put in the history books here, folks. And a lot of this doesn't fit. And I'm actually starting to think that this is pretty prevalent everywhere because I've done a, a few videos on other places as well, like India. I've covered China, their ancient history. If you go look into it, um, they have very similar things to this, where you see connections that, you know, you never heard about. Literally this. Or also, I mean, in the case of India, you had Thomas, as you would say, the doubter who went there and it was all of Southern India. And there's like these ancient temples where it looks just like this Cherokee thing here, where they'll have like literally something written like this in some ancient Indian temple in India. And it will say literally almost like what it would say in this book here, okay? <laughs> almost word for word. And they have no clue. The people that run the temple don't even really know. They're like, oh, okay. Like, like they forgot their history or something. And it's interesting. Like I said, you can see it with this as well. Some of these ancient American Indians had their own, they had very uh, nice architecture as well, even buildings and such, as you can see here. This was, you know, 500 BC, folks. Okay. And... Um, I mean, you want to go check out my other video because I cover a lot of other things as well. Matter of fact, they even have this one American Indian tribe. I'm trying to remember which one it was. They had this copper tube that had this parchment in it. And the parchment had one of the five books of, as you would say, Moses. Part of it. We're talking an American Indian tribe. Just something that was handed down to them from generation to generation. Oh, here we got this uh, copper tube here with this book in it in paleo hebrew you know which was the original language or phoenician um and like for example with the cherokees they clearly were from they were clearly from this area folks okay the cherokees here if you look at the cherokee green corn ceremony it's literally the exact same as the fall feast okay so this is <laughs> we're talking this this country of course talk about so that's where the Cherokees actually came from during during the Babylonian captivity they came over here to avoid it and that's who the Cherokees are that's actually one of them and literally if you follow this they have the exact same ceremony all the exact same except for the the offerings are made unto the thunder beings in the case of the Cherokees um, other than that everything is the exact same so how is it their ceremony is the exact same? Why do they have literally Phoenician written on their stuff? <laughs> okay. Why are their words all the same? I mean, this is what I'm trying to get at. So it's just, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, I just discovered this today and I thought this was just so surprising. I thought I'd have to talk about it because it just seemed too good to not talk about. All right. I actually got a lot of stuff to go over here. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? I was trying to... Okay, so these are the Hopewell sites. The Atlantic Coast, Tennessee, and Iowa. And like I said, they're, they're different for each tribe. Okay? And I was trying to get over to something over here. What was I going to show over here? Let's see. Oh, yeah. This is really interesting. I wanted to show you this. Okay, so this is... I'm trying to remember. This is the... Is this, is this a Mi'kmaq? Mi'kmaq? How, how do you say it? I think it's... Uh, I'm trying to remember the tribe's name. Oh, yeah, here we go. Mi'kmaq. This is who it is. Mi'kmaq tribe. These guys, their letters or hieroglyphs are literally the exact same as ancient Egypt. So this is a Smith Anthem letter hieroglyphs from ancient Egypt. This is the Mi'kmaq Indian hieroglyphs. And if you go down the list... They look almost all the exact same. You see that? Oh, let's 
get back too far. There we go. There's more. You can see their letter system is the exact same as ancient Egypt. You never hear about this in school, do you? No, you don't. Here you have another Indian. This isn't even in the same area. This is a completely different area. Where, where were these guys? These guys were over in uh, Hill Kumra. Okay. So they're, they're, they're like near the Canadian border. Okay. Talking like New York or something there. And these guys are over in the Grand Canyon area. Okay. These American Indians have some sort of heritage with this. These are the actual treasures that were found in the Grand Canyon. Like I said, it was like 2015 or something. And again, look, this is a history channel, folks. This is from the history channel. Now, before 2015, like I said, the Smithsonian was saying, oh, there's nothing there, nothing. That guy never was employed by us, by the way. There's nothing over in the Grand Canyon. What are you talking about? They go saying for 100 years it wasn't there. I had a video, like I think it was in 2012, talking about this, <laughs> saying there was something there, <laughs> right? Here's some of the actual uh, gold uh, pieces that are uh, from Egypt that were in the Grand Canyon. And here's one of the American Indians in, the, in that area. I can't remember which tribe this guy's from. Um, there's so many different tribes, but uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, they had the... They had the red-haired, uh, as you would say, giants also near the Grand Canyon. And there was a long um, thing between the Indians and them there. And I think it ended there. I think it was there at the Grand Canyon that it ended or near the Grand Canyon. We're talking about one of these. They had a lot of these, apparently, between the Indians and the giants. And, of course, this is very ancient history for even them. But they, they have lots of stories, even books, talking about this, okay, between the Indians and the Giants. So, <clears throat> and I know, I know one of them ended near the Grand Canyon. So, <laughs> it's just amazing, all of this. You never hear about any of this stuff. Like I said, I pulled up some uh, history books that were written by the Conquistadors, um, back in uh what was it like was it like the 1600s or something like that and i was going through some of the the history books that they were written writing back then and it talks about giants all throughout it talks about them having you know a skull this big literally and they even had like this cave with like three kings you know sitting on their thrones and i mean it was a lot of interesting stuff. I had a, did, did a video talking about that. And that was with the uh, Incas and Mayans and such. They had all their stories about them as well. But it's rather, it's rather curious, you know, this whole thing. And the more I look into this stuff, and I plan on doing a lot of videos like this because I figure if I found something about India, if I found something about China, if I found something about the American Indians like this, I'm guessing this is everywhere. I'm guessing this is literally everywhere. And I should just do some, some pretty detailed videos covering some of this. I mean, I'm just barely scratching the surface. I'm just like pointing out little, you know, like the, the tip of the iceberg here of what, what is actually here. Look at this. This is, this is one of their um, carvings right here. Shows one of their ships. And it shows all these people. What do you think this is, folks? Doesn't that look a little bit like Noah? <laughs> <laughs> and this is American Indian. Look at this. This looks like ancient hieroglyphs from Egypt. You see this? Look at this. Does this look familiar? Remember um, a certain basket on the water in Egypt? I mean, this thing is literally written in Egypt, Egyptian, isn't it? Look at that. That's in, that's in America. That was found near Michigan. This stuff is found around the, the Great Lakes. I mentioned how... Okay, we're going to get back to this in a sec. I have so many things open. Um, where was it at? Uh, I mentioned how they came in. Look, they came in through the Great Lakes. See that? This is where they found a lot of this stuff. So when they first came from, you know, 
avoiding Babylon, trying to you know get away from that. They came in from these two different directions, from near Florida and then through the Great Lakes. Okay, and that's where they found a lot of this stuff in Michigan. Like I said, I grew up there, but a lot of these are from there. Okay, look at that, man. That's just amazing. Look at this. Looks like the Ark. We're talking about the Covenant here, folks. Very similar looking. Even a similar type of uh, design for... Yeah. And of course, and I've talked. I've done videos on this as well. Dragons. And, and there's a lot of this. If you go look at some of the uh, pottery and carvings uh, from the Incas and Mayans, there's tons of this. They'll even show the design of the scales on some of the dinosaurs that they wouldn't even be able to know about if they're supposedly from millions of years ago. They actually had, uh, I saw one Mayan one, and it had the scales exactly right, just the way we know they are because they got preserved in um, some honeycomb or I can't remember what you call it, that amber stuff, whatever, got preserved in that, and they actually had some samples of how the, the scales actually looked. And it was the exact same as their drawings. And they would show them like riding them or like, you know, something like this. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and there's like stories like this about dragons everywhere. I'm sure if you've seen my other videos, you know all about that. But there's tons of those stories as well. Uh, so, I mean, it's just pretty amazing. Some of the stuff here, folks, that I found. Uh, what else do we got here? There's actually a lot more. They got like tons of these pictures of things like this. Look at this. What in the world? It's like a castle. So this is amazing too. Wow. I don't know what, I don't know. I guess this is something that maybe was made later. I don't, I'm not sure some of these. What is this one? Oh, this is, this is, uh, looks like Egyptian as well. This is also um, YHVA, H, y, YHVH. Okay, what was it I was going to show you? I was going to show you something else back here. I have so many windows open right now. Yeah, here we go. I think I mentioned about this. They had some scholars actually... Uh, look into this copper tube that had this parchment and examined it and figured out what it was. And like I said, it was, one, it was part of the five books, okay, as you would say of Moses. They found these as well in Farmington, Connecticut on Pinnacle Mountain. As you can see here, also written in Phoenician, you can see Adam, Abraham. So there's a lot of this stuff, folks. It's quite amazing. But um, at any rate, so there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, and you could check out this channel here. Okay, he has, he has a number of videos like this. I haven't even went through them all. I've just went through a little bit of couple of them and then there's also another channel I was looking at here as well uh, actually there's a couple channels but that was one of the main ones I was looking at right there I was showing you stuff from his his video there because this video is like an hour and 30 minutes long I'm just showing you some of the highlights of what it says uh, I'm not gonna be making an hour and 30 minute long video here folks um, but <laughs> at any rate so also I mean considering some of the stuff that we've been seeing of recent folks with uh, inflation and it just i've been reflecting on this the last couple days just how things have been i'm just like wow look where we're at man we don't even know our history we don't know anything we have all this technology we got computers we got cell phones and we don't even know our own history we don't know anything and then now we have people using these electronics to try to you know these computers and everything to get us to think certain things. You know what I mean? Get us going a certain direction. 
And we've seen all that's been happening in the last two years. <laughs> I mean, these are American Indian tribes that had the same traditions for like thousand years and still had the same stuff from the ancient times. Same ceremonies. Here we are, two years time, they're trying to, you know, like 10, 20 years time, they're trying to completely change everything. You know what I mean? At any rate, obviously you've seen kind of what's been going on with inflation, um, with uh, just the prices in the supermarket have been going up. I've been talking, obviously, at the end of my videos a lot more about some of this, uh, you know, considering the things that we've been seeing, it might be wise to be prepared. I mean, maybe like the American Indians, they knew how to live without electricity. Like this is this book back here. I have a link below for it called The Lost Ways. You may want that book. It tells you how to make a cellar. It tells you how to, to make certain kinds of food that last a long period of time. How to do things around the house without electricity like they used to do back in the old days. And um, considering some of the stuff we've been seeing of recent, you might want that. <laughs> you never know, man. I've, I've heard a lot of interesting dreams, and they're not exactly good ones, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All manner of stuff. And <laughs> you're probably going to want that book in, indeed for that reason. But also, uh, on top of that, I mean, if you think about it with inflation, recently we had uh, the fuel prices go very high, and it was in short supply, and uh, truckers were having issues trying to get to supermarkets. Now, just imagine if that happened to be something that happens for a month straight. You're going to have a lot of empty supermarket shelves. A lot of your favorite goods, Doritos, whatever they might be, may not be available. You got to have your Doritos, you know what I mean? <laughs> At any rate, I have a link in the description for uh, storable food that has a 25 year shelf life, $247 for one month's worth of it. Uh, here's just some of the items that are included you have broccoli, cheesy broccoli, rice soup, creamy stroganoff, traveler stew, mac and cheese, banana chips, mashed potatoes. Chocolate pudding, Southwest rice, orange energy drinks, uh, pancakes, and all manner of other things, even oatmeal. Of course, with it having a 25-year shelf life, you're not going to get steaks in there, folks. You know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, this is cheaper than it probably costs you already for a month's worth of food. Way cheaper than it would cost you. I, I was watching a video the other day, some guy in Canada showing how much he was able to get for 100 bucks, and it was like nothing. It was like four days worth of food at most. I mean, he was like, he showed like some uh, some beef and uh, some bread and just like some random cans of this, that, and the other. It wasn't even that much stuff. It was like about this much stuff. And of course, I think where I live, I could probably buy more, but I mean, maybe in some places it's like that, man. You can't buy very much for a hundred bucks, but uh, this is only 247 for a month's worth of food. Also, um, you can even get three months worth of food for uh, about five ninety seven. Links are in the description. Um, again, like I said, for some people, they may spend this much just for regular food in the supermarket every month, easily. Uh, maybe even more in some cases, depending on where you live. So again, that's three months worth of food, 120 pounds, 120 pounds. And this is dried food. This is already dried, part of it at least. I, I think all of it actually, I think it all is dried. <laughs> So imagine if it wasn't dry, you add water to it, you're talking like 300 pounds of food here or something, folks. I mean, it's a lot. It's not a little bit. I mean, it's these canisters that are about this big and you get like two for a month and they're like this big. They're like 40 pounds each, I think it was. And so you're going to have six of those, right? I think, I think it's something like that. Maybe I'm calculating wrong. Something like that. It's six of those things. They're really big. At any rate, there's a lot of food in them. But uh, again, links are in the description for that. And also, I would recommend, considering how the dollar is losing value daily, we have things like gold, silver, real estate even. I just came across something rather interesting I'm going to tell you about in a second here about uh, my own house, my mortgage, that you may want to look into because I'm, I'm going to be saving myself a lot of money as a result of it. Uh, we're talking... In my case, it's actually not a lot compared to maybe someone else. I mean, fifty, sixty thousand dollars sounds like a huge amount of money, right? I may be saving myself that much money soon here, because uh, the bank called me and told me I can get one percent lower uh, uh, APR on my on my mortgage, right? 
I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to save a little bit of money doing this, right? Maybe I'll refinance, right? Because the rates are really low right now, okay? So then he went through the mortgage calculator and showed it out, and I'm like, wow. I mean, if I pay just a little bit more than what I'm currently paying with this 1% lower, I can get it down from 30 years to 15 years with only adding a couple hundred dollars onto the end of what I'm already paying with this lower interest rate shaving like 50,000 off. And I have a low cost mortgage compared to most people because I live in a very cheap place, uh, cost of living wise. I mean, if you're in California, you might be able to shave, save yourself 200,000 bucks or more, maybe 300,000 on your loan. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, like this is a lot. So I would recommend uh, you know, looking into uh, mortgage loans in your area. You might be in for a, a good surprise on that. You might save yourself a lot of money pay off your house early even. And like I was saying with real estate and, and getting onto the whole thing with real estate, prices are, uh, the value of real estate is going up right now. If you already have a home, if you're able to lower your your your, your payments and on top of that, the, the value is going up. It's going up with inflation. The dollar, holding the dollar in your bank account is going nowhere. It's going to just lose value. Um, but I mean, things, I mean, a very simple thing you could put your money into is like silver coins. Um, Silver coins, they only cost 35 bucks for like a, a, a half dollar, or essentially one ounce of silver. Uh, this is what I'm talking about right here. Let's see if I get one troy ounce here. Here's an example of something. Yeah, $32 for one ounce silver buffalo round, for example, things like this. It, and if the dollar happens to be, go to zero, People are going to be using things like this right here, silver coins. Uh, and there's different kinds of coins. Some of it can be legal tender. Some, tender. some can be just, you know, silver rounds or just silver itself. And someone in my comment section was mentioning that. He was like, look, you know, you should explain the difference. I'm not exactly a silver expert. I just know that it's smart to have it. And it probably is wiser to get the ones that are actual tender. They might cost slightly more, but... I mean, it will have more value, perceived value in people's minds, especially um, if the dollar is worthless and you have to if you have to use something else. There's also gold, of course. Gold is something that's far more expensive, though. A coin of gold can cost you even a thousand plus dollars. That's why I don't usually buy those. I usually buy the silver instead. But and it's you know it's probably going to be more likely people are going to be using silver than than gold. But that's why I think silver's price is going to go through the roof too if the dollar ends up going to nothing and the economy is gone, all that, you're going to see stocks go to nothing. And maybe once the stocks go to nothing, it might be a wise idea to buy them then, especially if you think it's a company that will be around after the whole thing's over. <laughs> Other than that, though, I mean, I would definitely not be in stocks right now until after the fact, after you see the thing go down to nothing. <laughs> but... Um, other than that, you know, uh, this is just kind of my advice. You also have the bit, the bit, as you would say, coin, as I usually say it. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now, the price is uh, down quite a bit from where it was. Now, just to give you an idea, 14 months ago, a little over a year ago, this thing was $4,000. The bit, corn, as we'll call it here, was $4,000 a little over a year ago. Now it is 38,000. Right now it's down. It was actually $70,000 like a little over a month ago. So I was telling people back when it was 4,000 to go buy it. And people are like in the comment section saying, no, I don't think it's a good investment. And they're telling me it's going to go down to a thousand and be worthless and all this. And I'm like, dude, I think this is the lowest it's ever going to be for, you know, <laughs> so what I would recommend, I don't know, it's up to you. This is, like I said, this is an investment advice from just some dude talking on YouTube. But the way I look at it, um, if it goes a lot lower, I would definitely buy one or buy some. You can buy a little bit of it because uh, I think it's going to go up to $150,000 probably by the end of the year. It's just, just my theory. It won't take very long for it to get to $150,000. So <clears throat> it won't be very long at all, especially with the way the dollar is going. It'll be very quick. But that is another way you could retain some of the value of your of your money. Because um, you may want to retain it. I mean, do you want to take around wheelbarrows full of money to buy a loaf of bread? Not really. 
If you have silver, you're going to retain your value while the dollar goes to nothing. So the silver right now, one coin is $32. It might be $300, you know, next year for the same coin is what I'm trying to get at. So it's going to retain its value is what I'm trying to get at at any rate. Um, so that's kind of my video. Um, kind of wonder what some of you guys think about all this. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.